what's up YouTube it's Miles and today's video is a continuation of yesterday's which was the 15 scariest haunted houses in the US and we left off with the Lizzie Borden house I believe so I'm gonna find that real quick on the website and all right so that was number six so number seven is the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Her husband developed the gun that won the West, which came back to bite Sarah Winchester in the butt. After losing her husband and a young daughter, the widow Winchester consulted a spiritualist who alleged the family was being haunted by American Indians, Civil War soldiers, and others killed by the famous rifle. It was recommended that Winchester move west and use her 20 million inheritance to continuously build a home to appease these spirits. What was erected between 1884 and 1922, known as the Winchester Mystery House, was a sprawling 160 room mansion with haphazard architecture that leads touring guests to nowhere, though there are spirit guides. Sounds pretty interesting. I've always wanted to go to the Winchester Mystery House, but I've never been to California, which is like <clears throat> my dream. And if I were to go to California, like no matter what part it is, I would find my way to the Winchester Mystery House because 160 room mansion, that shit's huge. Like, this is the picture. Like, you can already tell that it's a big mansion to begin with. Like, when you look at it. Alright, number eight. Joshua Ward House. Salem, Massachusetts. This is really close to me. Oh my gosh. I found a road trip, y'all. Alright, this brick mansion built for a prominent merchant in 1784 is an exact site where Sheriff George Corwin, a major figure in the Salem Witch Trials, lived died and was buried in 1697, though later exhumed. Corwin was known as the Strangler for the 19 men and women executed for witchcraft under his watch. He is said to still creep around the grounds, with some visitors claiming they have been choked by him. And he's apparently not alone. One of his victims was famously captured in all her devilish glory by a realtor taking photos of the property. I can't wait until my mom gets her car back. It's currently in the shop because it needs brakes. Or no, it doesn't need brakes. Like, there's something wrong with something in her car. So she currently needs that fixed. And she should be getting it today. And I'm pretty excited because if she agrees to a road trip, we're going to this house. Like, 100%. Alright, number nine. Lemp Mansion in St. Louis, Missouri. Is that, is that? I think it's Missouri. Alright, so it says... Even all the beer in the world won't necessarily lead to happiness. Case in point, the Lemp family, purveyors of Lemp Brewing Company, a stalwart in St. Louis before... Prohibition hit. Yep, that's the word. Excuse me. Four members of the family killed themselves between 1904 and 1949. Three of them inside the 33-room Victorian mansion, where they allegedly still reside, haunting guests of the converted restaurant and inn. It has been listed by Travel Channel as one of the most terrifying real haunted houses in America. That's wild. Some like reading off some of these stuff, these like these things about hauntings, and hearing people's experiences with them, it kind of boggles my mind how there's like more than like seventy percent of the world, maybe a little less, probably like fifty to sixty, do not believe in ghosts and spirits and stuff like that. And like I don't understand it because all of these people are having experiences. People have documented it. Um, they've shown proof, like, you, how Ouija board, a lot of people think that doesn't work, but people who show proof it does. It's just like, I don't 
understand how they don't believe that because there's so much proof of that one thing and they still choose not to believe it. Um, I'm a firm believer in ghosts and spirits and demons and stuff like that because I've come in contact with so many of them that it's hard for me to not believe them, like believe in them. Like it's so, so hard for me to think that they're non-existent, that they don't, they're not real. Because, like I said, I've had so many, like, experiences with spirits I've been possessed. I've talked to my grandmother. I've talked to my dead brother. I've talked to my dead best friend. I've talked to other people's um, dead family members that I never knew without them even being there. Like, if it was one night, it was me and my mom playing the Ouija board, and I had gotten in contact with my ex-best friend's aunt, who just recently passed away. Um, and we were playing, my mom and I were playing the Ouija board, I think two days ago, and we got in contact with her, she's telling us all this stuff, and like, I, I nor my mom knew anything about her, like, my ex-best friend never told me anything about her, never told me what she was like, um, nothing, like, it was just unbelievable, and what kind of, like, stumps me a little bit on that you know, coming in contact with my ex-best friend's aunt is the fact that I told my ex-best friend that I had got in contact with her aunt and, like, told her all this stuff that she knew that I didn't know. And she's like, oh, we can't be friends anymore. Like, all right. But it just, like, it baffles me because I don't understand how people can't believe in that. Like, I can sometimes because, like, some of them haven't had the experience of... <clears throat> seeing seeing ghosts or communicating with them hands-on or anything like that but um yeah i don't know i just don't get it it's like i don't know all right guys and the last one to even it out is haunting in connecticut in southington connecticut no, haunting in connecticut house in southington connecticut my dad lives near here too the drama the drama the Snedeker family experienced in the 80s living in this haunted house and former funeral home was crazy enough to be turned into a popular horror, f horror flick in 2009 that the pic provided is of the movie house, the real house, a private residence remains shrouded in mystery. This is a picture of the movie house. Um... During a two-year span, span, both of the Snedeker parents claimed to have been physically assaulted and sodomized by demonic spirits, and said their son Philip was often visited by a creepy man with long black hair. A new family claims the home is spirit-free and normal, except for the routine drive-bys, which have often forced police to add up backup patrols. That doesn't really seem haunting, it's just like... I guess there's a lot of, like, drive-by shootings near it or whatever. I don't know. But. I'm going to leave that there because the next five or four tomorrow's video. Because I remember mentioning yesterday that I was going to try and even it out and do four for this video. That way there's five for tomorrow's and it's a little longer than this one. Um, I think... The way I'm going to make this, um, this video longer is I'm probably, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about my experiences with ghosts and, um, possessions that I have gone through, which left me kind of, like, traumatized a little bit, but I've gotten over it. Um, there was this one time... I was using the Ouija board at my friend's house, my old friend's house that I'm not in contact anymore. It was his birthday, and it was, he actually gave me the Ouija board as a gift afterwards. Um, we were sitting in his house, and it was just him and I, and his phone was, like, completely dead. Like, you couldn't even turn it on dead. And it was all the way across the room. We were sitting in the living room by the front door, and his phone was near the TV, which was all the way across the other side of the room. He pulls out this thing, and 
it says Ouija board on it. And I was like, alright, I've always wanted to use one, don't know how. At the time, I didn't believe in it either. Um, and who we got in contact with is... It really, like, broke my heart a little bit. But, so he pulls it out, and he puts it on the ground. And he's like, we're gonna use this. And I was like, okay, sure. And he asked me if I was scared, and I told him no. And he said, good, because it's bad to show fear around spirits when you're using a Ouija board. And I was like, okay, why? And he's like, because it makes it easier for them to manifest themselves into you and possess you. I had that in the back of my mind the entire time we were playing. And uh, so we're playing, and we get in contact with my, my best friend, who committed suicide when she was 12, I was 9, and I never thought in my entire life that I would ever see her or hear from her again, obviously because she passed away, but I never thought that I'd like, you know, see her spirit or talk to her using something I never believed in in the first place, but, hold on, <laughs> but anyways, we got in contact with her, and it's kind of just like, it broke my heart a little bit, because I didn't believe it at first, and I never really knew anything about her, although she was one of my only friends when I was that young. I didn't really know much about her, I just knew that she was depressed and stuff, and um, the stuff I knew about her I couldn't remember at the time because I was just so like messed up by getting in contact with her that I didn't really know what to do or what to say. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out a place to put my phone because it's like shaking, but anyways, we're talking to her and I wanted to believe it was her, so I asked her a question I knew about her that my friend wouldn't have known, and it was what her brother had done to me. That's a different story that I will get into at some point when I feel comfortable enough talking about it. I asked her what he had done to me. She gave the answer. I told her to prove that it was her, and a couple of seconds later, my friend's phone turned on from being completely dead, like, like I had mentioned. It was dead to the point where we couldn't even turn it on to see if there was still a little bit of life left. To see the Apple symbol when you turn it on. And it just turns on out of nowhere. Like, out of a horrible, like, dead state. Like, negative zero charge. And... Um, a text popped up on his phone, and it was a text from me, even though my phone, I didn't have my phone, I had left it in his mom's car on accident, and the text from me said, it's winter, and that just, that fucked me up, and then I had, I told her that we couldn't talk to her anymore, because it was just, it was screwing me up, it was making me really scared, and stuff like that, and we got in contact with a demon that everybody knows about. His name is Ozo. And I was so scared from the contact that we had before with my friend that I started crying. And my friend was telling me, he was like, stop, you need to stop showing your fear. Something bad's gonna happen if you don't stop crying, you need to calm down. I didn't calm down. Something about me is if I'm crying or if I'm upset, you can't like tell me to calm down because I won't. And what happened was Zozo had possessed me, and I tried to climb to my friend's roof and tried jumping off. Luckily enough, um, Zozo, when he was in possession of me, when he was jumping off, he jumped off in the right spot because when he jumped as me, I myself landed on a trampoline in tears. Like, I was... I was traumatized. Like, that was the worst, like, possession that I've been through, in my opinion. I mean, like, there's many others that I've been through, 
that would be like a kind of like a story time on this. So if you guys want to hear that, um, like those stories and stuff like that, and just other stories, you should let me know down in the comments because I'm going to end this video before it gets too long. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. If you, like I've said in all of my videos, if you ever need someone to talk to, my social media will be linked down below as well as the addresses of the house, houses we went over today. I love you guys so much and I hope you have a great day. Bye.